this is Catherine Zeta-Jones. And this is nutritionist, personal trainer and wellness coach Paul from Henshabavore. And this is everything I eat in a day. Along with my critique. Back in the day when I was a little lad, I'll be honest, I used to have a little bit of a thing for Catherine, not knowing what she's been up to for years and years and years now. So interested to look to see how she's living and, you know, to see if she's looking after herself. First thing I do when I wake up in the morning is get my coffee going because I really can't do anything properly without my coffee. Okay, so not the best start. We shouldn't be relying on caffeine to get us going. That's a sure sign that your body's not in a good place. The way to use caffeine, and number one, you shouldn't be using caffeine if you're a poor metabolizer because it affects the sleep too much and sleep is vitally critical to well-being. If you are a good metabolizer, wait an hour and a half, two hours after you wake and that way your body's working in the natural way that it should. And we can use the caffeine once or twice a day. Obviously don't have it too late in the day, certainly not after 2 p.m. Um, and then it just gives it that little boost but then we're clearing the adenosine receptors and the next morning we're waking and we're fresh and not feeling groggy. So I get that brewing. I usually put it into a French press because there's something very nostalgic about that. I get up very early so my house is super quiet. Early to bed and early to rise, is there any truth in that? Well, yes, we should be in line with the circadian rhythm set by the sun. All the cells of our bodies have their own little clocks which run off of this. Maybe she is off to a good start after all. And then I go out and take my dog for his little pee-pee. Lifestyles of the rich and famous, hey? So having companion animals in our lives, you know, they enrich us so much, they make us so happy. They do benefit our health. It brings our stress levels down, depending on how mental that your dog may be. Um, but yeah, and obviously an animal lover. Gotta love that. And then we come back in and by that point, I just do my French press, I pour my cup of coffee and I just sit. Waiting for the caffeine to kick in. I used to rely on caffeine. It's so blinking hard to get off this stuff. What you really need to do, whatever dose of caffeine you're on, you know, say, say you're doing four coffees a day, like four teaspoons of coffee throughout the day. You know, bring it down to three quarters of a teaspoon over those servings, then half a teaspoon, then quarter, over the course of a few weeks. It's quite manageable like that. And then, you know, if you're a bad metabolizer of it and it is wrecking your sleep, you know, that's the worst thing you can do for your health apart from, you know, jumping off a bridge, really. Go through that discomfort, go through that pain for a short time and you have so much energy after you will be a amazed. Second best decision I ever made after going whole foods vegan. I don't usually eat breakfast until about eight o'clock. I like to have breakfast. I'm a three meals a day kind of girl. A lot of people skip breakfast, don't they? If you're just the sort of person your body can't handle food that early on, fair enough. But for most of us, we can. And you burn far more of the calories you eat if you're eating them earlier in the day. It's to do with that circadian rhythm I mentioned earlier and cryobiology. But I do have very, very specific breakfast needs and it's all about daylight saving. So basically in the winter hours, I'm a porridge girl. Oh, top marks, Catherine. So heart healthy with all the beta glucans, obviously nice starchy, slow burning complex carbohydrate. I have porridge with brown sugar. Why? Just get some lovely fruit in there. Bananas. Once you've got off the refined sugar for a time, bananas, particularly if they've got the brown age spots, not black bruising, but the brown dimply age spots, they're so sugary, it's unreal. If you're not at that stage or you don't want to get to that stage, you're just impatient. Dried fruit, raisins, particularly chopped dates, so sugar dense, but the sugars are attached to fiber and with polyphenols and the effects on our blood sugar and our body is very, very different. Refined sugar is basically the devil. Sugar in whole plant forms with all the other lovely stuff I just mentioned, one of the very best things you can put in your body. A lot of very misinformed people obviously say that fruit is unhealthy because of the sugar, but if we look to nature, look at primates, bonobos, the closest primates to the human primate, yes, we're primates as well. What do they eat? Mostly fruit. Get it in ya, son. And I put some blueberries on the top. What, 12 of them? I don't f with anything less than about 300 grams. And I literally have that 
every morning. Definitely Monday to Friday. I'll let you know what happens on Sundays and Saturdays. When we spring forward, I go into my yogurt, non-fat vanilla yogurt. Hopefully a vegan one, something like soya yogurt would be very good. Of course, dairy yogurt with the long chain triglycerides, these types of saturates that cause heart disease, the leading cause of death in the Western world. Totally avoidable if you just think about what you're eating. The trouble with some low fat things is they bung a load of sugar in to make it more palatable. Again, if it's dairy, you're gonna have lactose, which is a free sugar, unbound to fiber. This is a dietary risk factor for Alzheimer's, the leading cause of death now in the UK. Second biggest dietary risk factor after salt. Bare naked granola. I was not aware of the bear, so I thought I'd take a look for, yeah. Yep, sorry about that. So, the, with ingredients this, you may know that they appear in order of how much is in there. So the biggest amount of ingredients is whole oats. So excellent start. And then honey, the second biggest amount. Wap, wap. Another free sugar, raising your risk for all sorts of horrible diseases. Displacing healthy calories as well. Like why would you do it? Almonds, very good. Canola oil, not particularly healthy. Not half as bad as, as you know, if you're displacing like animal fats like butter and things but you know again it's just empty calories apart from anything else coconut okay so when we extract oil that's unhealthy but whole coconut a bit of it is shown to be okay for heart health uh, i wouldn't eat a load of that either though to be honest there's probably not a whole lot in there raisins great glycerin i'm not sure what effect that is on your health I'd Maybe neutral, you might want to look it up there. Let me know below if I've uh, missed something there. Cranberry's great. Crane, cane sugar again, like the second type of sugar. Then you've got oat bran, great. Then you've got maple syrup, a third type of sugar. So pecans, walnuts, oat flour, ground flax seeds. You've got some omega-3 toasted sesame seeds. So there's lots of good stuff in there. What I would do is take those healthy whole foods, whiz up some dates in water to make date syrup, mix it all together, bung it in the oven, and it will taste just as good, but be extremely healthy for you. Blueberries, raspberries, and that is my summer months go-to breakfast. Any type of berry obviously is super healthy, so that's amazing. To get an even better health outcome, rather than eating the same thing day after day after day, mix it up. One day have cherries, one day have strawberries. You get the physetin, which is a senolytic, which kills these so-called uh, zombie cells. Blackberries, they have like 5X the antioxidants of strawberries, so then you're getting some benefit in that way, bloops. Whatever, mix things up. Don't stick to the same things. If you're having legumes, one day have a white bean, another day have a black bean, have bolotti, have a dookie, have mung. Like, just mix things up as much as you can more different types of fiber encourages more different types of gut bacteria and they are responsible for 99 percent of our health potential only one percent of our genes control our health outcome 99 percent belongs to the genes of the bacteria that we invite to live in the colon predicated on our food choices if you want to live a long healthy life feed the prevotella strains with soluble fiber resistant starch and polyphenols aka whole plant foods vegan cut to saturdays and sundays that's when we as a family do a good British fryer. Possibly the biggest oxymoron I've ever heard. What's good about giving yourself things like cancer and heart disease? What's good about causing immense amounts of animal suffering? I get my imported British bacon. We have sausages, which we call bangers. Highly salted pig's flesh two ways who would want to put that in their body salt is the number one dietary risk factor for alzheimer's disease have you seen people dying of alzheimer's disease have you perhaps had a loved one suffer that so like you've lost them before they're gone it's a horrendous way to go not to mention the burden it puts on your loved ones and the most popular way to put these pigs to death in the uk is via gas chamber yes to pigs we are adolf hitler it's horrible they die screaming if you consider yourself a nice, kind, rational, decent person, you owe it to yourself to find out whether you're happy to keep funding it. You need to either go to a slaughterhouse, they probably won't want you in there though, or you can watch Dominion, Land of Hope and Glory, or Earthlings. You owe it to these animals to see what you're funding. We have baked beans, scrambled eggs. If you're eating baked beans, with toast, preferably whole grain, of course. You get masses of protein. You don't need to add an egg. Eggs, of course, the most cholesterol-rich food in the world. Also tons of saturates. 
Heart disease is our number one killer. Why would you do it? Wakey, wakey. And then for the American contingent in my family, which is my husband and my two children, we do French toast. It's actually the Martha Stewart recipe. It's really good. Brioche bread, let it soak, put a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla, and then of course, good old Canadian maple syrup. I wouldn't even serve that to someone I disliked, let alone someone I love. Every weekend it comes together in a fabulous family brunch. We love it. I look forward to it all week. Love, connection, community, immensely important to the human animal. Yes, family gatherings, all sitting down to a lovely meal. Fantastic. Why not give them a lovely meal of foods that love their bodies though? Legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, herbs and spices. You can make some mouth-watering, delicious things. They're gonna uplift them, make them feel amazing, and help them to live the longest, happiest, healthiest life. Then you get to hang out with them more. Next is 11 o'clock. I always have a cup of tea. Of course, all herbal teas are very health promoting. If she's meaning the typical kind of tea, the Camellia sinensis, that most people drink, then matcha, so the powdered green tea leaves would be the best, 10x the antioxidants. And usually have a cookie or something. I'm sure I don't have to tell you why that's a shit idea. Eat a piece of fruit, or ideally, eat all your foods in their designated meals. In that way, nutrients in one ingredient can amplify nutrients in other ingredients. You get more antioxidant, more anti-cancer power without eating any more calories. I'm not a big snacker, except for anything chocolate. For me, chocolate is a real treat. I deserve it. I like Cadbury's milk chocolate because it's, again, it's a British brand that I was brought up with. The way I look at it, I feel like I do a lot of good in the world. So I deserve really good health. I deserve great taste too. So preferably, you're best off sticking to cocoa powder. You can get a lovely chocolate taste, but a lot of the fat has been taken out of it, so, you know, there's more nutritional density. Milk chocolate is horrible for you, horrible for the planet, and horrible for the animals. We kill calves to steal their milk. Killing baby cows, what's that all about? Lunch is usually a light affair for us. Always a salad. I always have a salad with my lunch and my dinner. Fantastic, I think that's something we should all do. You know, salad greens, so few calories, so nutritionally dense. I would wager possibly the healthiest food on the planet. The darker, the better. Watercress being our number one. So my favorite kind of salad would be a spinach, arugula mix of, of leaves, pine nuts, tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. Let's call the whole thing off. No, let's not. Those are fantastic choices so far. I sometimes put um, a little blue cheese yeah, call it off. This is giving me a coronary just watching it. And my dressing, extra virgin olive oil, balsamic vinegar. I sometimes put some mustard in there. Mix, 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 shake and toss. I prefer to make my dressings with something like tahini, which is blended sesame seeds with all the fiber in there, which is gonna be a greater health potential. To accompany my salad, a little breast of chicken. A lot of people consider chicken to be healthy. It's relatively healthy, I suppose, compared to highly processed meats and like red meat, but you know, it's pumped full of salt to make it take on more water so people get more profit at the expense of your health. And however lean it claims to be, cholesterol is part of the cell walls of the muscles. So it's raising your risk for heart disease. Sometimes like a stuffed aubergine. I'd stick to that. You can also do portobello mushrooms, bell pepper, it's delicious. In the afternoon at always 4.30, I brew my Cassidy Jones coffee. 4.30, no wonder you need another coffee first thing in the morning. You probably only got to sleep five minutes previously. If I'm really, really good, I've already baked some scones and clotted cream and jam. Really good. So I have like an afternoon tea. Michael and I usually sit down for dinner at eight. Usually if we go out, we always make our reservation for eight because we're not really into eating late at night. There's a multitude of reasons why this is a really good idea. Again, calories eaten last thing at night versus first thing in the morning, far more likely to make you gain weight. If we're digesting a heavy meal, it's gonna make it really hard for us to sleep properly. And it also plays havoc with our blood sugar. So a typical dinner for me would be my salad. Go on. 
in this salad at night. I love fruit. I always chop up an apple, throw it in a salad. Of course, I love avocado in a salad too. I would put oranges in my salad, figs in my salad. Fantastic, and of course, you know, the fats in the avocado is gonna help to absorb fat-soluble vitamins like E and K from the leafy greens, any red, orange, yellow, green fruits or vegetables that are gonna be carotenoid rich. Very good. So my perfect supper probably would be, I'm a big fish and chicken, white meat kind of girl. Oh no. But I do love just a regular filet mignon. Right, get out. With like a mushroom, shiitake mushroom sauce. The way I make it is that I usually buy the, the bouillabaisse, the kind of base of it, and then just add in a lot of mushrooms. You know, mushrooms, super healthy, but they really give us that meaty umami flavor that people enjoy. Whack some textured vegetable protein in there, which is very healthy, but a real meat-like texture. Be super delicious and actually healthy for you. And then vegetables, clean, sauteed. Fantastic. If someone was to say to me, what would be your final wish for meal? What I do love is cauliflower. Yes! With cheese. Bloody hell! Why do people do that? They take the healthiest foods on the planet. Cauliflower, cruciferous vegetables, got sulforaphane, which is highly anti-cancer. And then you add in cheese. In rodent studies, they found that they could switch on and off the growth progression of cancer by giving them casing, the solid dairy protein. I guess I'm a big cheese lover. But do you love it more than being alive? When I was pregnant, I craved Indian food every, every day. I was brought up on Indian food. Stick with that then. Some of the healthiest types of meals on the planet. Lots of whole grains, lots of legumes, lots of vegetables, lots of really protective herbs and spices, particularly turmeric. The spice that gives curry a lovely orange color. So anti-cancer. Low in saturates, low in sugar, high in protective compounds, and in my opinion, the most delicious food on the planet. Things I avoid to eat, I don't like awful liver kidneys. So that's tripe. Can't do that. It's funny to me how humans are disgusted by dead animals' body parts, kidneys, livers. Like we understand that they're organs that come from bodies like our bodies. But when it comes to meat, most people forget that that's a bit of an animal. It's packaged all nice and neatly. We use euphemisms like steak instead of chopped up cow flesh. Once you go vegan and under your conditioning, you're just as disgusted when you're in a supermarket with a rows upon rows of chopped up animal muscle. It's like a horror show. I love desserts. Ice cream was just across the board. I'm just a huge ice cream lover. I'm amazed that Catherine is in the amazing shape that she is. Most people eating this way would not be. They would be obese. Of course, you can't see inside her arteries, however. It's really sad what most people are doing to themselves. Some people say, do you live to eat or do you eat to live? The sad reality is most people are killing themselves with their food choices. However, if you would like to optimize your health and the way you look, then check out my online coaching service. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.